Hello and welcome to the third and final Community Connector training for the Oral Health in Under 10s project as part of the Core 20 plus 5 programme. And it's we I'm from Scottish Community Development Centre. I'm providing the training and it's been commissioned by Health Watch Bucks, Health Watch Oxfordshire and Health Watch Reading. My name's Andrew Patterson. And the third session is on building a message. A quick recap of the first two sessions. We discussed health inequalities in the first session, why some communities have poorer health than others. Prevention, doing things to prevent people getting ill in the first place. We talked about lived experience and why we need to hear the voices of people in communities in order to improve health. And in the second session, we discussed how to reach people as community connectors, ways to gather stories, and considerations of safety and well-being for ourselves and for others. In the live session that I delivered, which some of you would have attended for this third training session, we started with a discussion which was about what we're trying to achieve or change by gathering stories. And I gave a few prompts. I wanted to say it goes a bit beyond just thinking about healthier teeth. And going back to some of the things we talked about that are behind poor health, behind inequalities, and with, what would we want to achieve in terms of prevention? We also talked about what might help and what might make this difficult. And it was things like what people might be helpful, what people might be a challenge, and what methods we could use to get our message out there. So after we talked about some of those things, we looked at using what people say, because as I've said, in the first and second sessions, we've explored how to gather stories. But in this third session, it's about what to do with them. Going back to some of the things we covered in the second session, it's really good to take notes, including the conversation that you are having, it's a good place to take notes. Thinking about the things that are coming up in the conversation, not always what people are saying, although that's important too, but with maybe focusing more on what people are not saying, like silences and the mood of the room, for instance. When you are recording what people are saying, you're, you're already recording them by with an audio recorder or if it's on Teams or Zoom, you'll be pressing record perhaps. But even still, it might be handy just to be noting things down as you go because you could be seeing patterns develop and that's what we're going to go on to talk about. When Before you start trying to get something from the stories you've been hearing, you kind of need to get them all down on into something written or typed. You, you're not going to be able to keep listening back to audio recordings all the time. So if you have it written down, it's going to be easier to look at. But that's a lot of work. So that's why we're saying that Health Watch are there to support you with that they're going to be taking on a lot of that. If you are doing any transcription, that's the, the fancy word for writing down what people have been saying, then some of the technology will be helpful. Teams and Zoom have options for turning audio into words and into written text. And there's also other um, apps you can download for free um, they have limited functionality, but you can use the limited functionality for free. And that one of them is otter.ai. There are links to these and quick uh, links to guides on these things on the website, which there's a link to at the end. 
Then what you need to do is once you've got everything typed out or written down, you want to look at them together. Because what you're doing is you're building a message from all the different stories that you have. If you had a group conversation, then a lot of the stories are together already. But if you have individual one-to-one -one interviews, then you might want to collect them in the same place, either different files in the same folder on your computer or printed off with a paper clip so that you're keeping them together. And you might just want to be looking at them at the same time. Remove real names and keep secure. So again, on a computer with a password or if you're having printed copies, keep them secure in a locked drawer or cupboard. What you're trying to do is find patterns. You're looking for people saying the same thing or something that keeps coming up. There may be something that a few people have found helpful or that a few people have found difficult. Keep a record of any ideas you have. And again, that's why taking notes can be helpful. And once you have some ideas, then start looking for more examples of that. And so if you've got your interviews or conversations printed out, you can be using a highlighter pen to highlight the same thing that's coming up in different people's, in, in what different people have said, but using the same color of highlighter. So if people were talking about, for instance, having financial difficulties, that could be a theme and you could be using a yellow pen, for instance, to be highlighting whenever people are talking about not being able to afford things or that type of thing. You could even cut out text and stick it all in the same place where people have been saying the same kind of thing. You could use a table, you could um, have that on your computer and there's a template available on the website. You could um, use a table like this or it could be slightly different, but this table essentially allows you to come up with themes in the left column. Then in the middle column, you could find examples or quotes where that theme, where, there, where that people are talking about that theme. You could either use direct quotes or the text, the actual text that is there in your conversations, or you could summarize it in, the, in that section so that you could go and actually find out what they're saying later but it's handy to actually have things written there exactly as people have been saying, because you want to be using quotes as you go. Then you will have some comments maybe on the right hand column. So that could be for any thing that you're observing as you're finding these patterns. Maybe if not all of them are quite saying the same thing, there's some that are um, slight, they're saying something slightly different, but you had it in that column, or if it's uh, if there's a link that you're finding between different themes, you could be highlighting it there. So again, it's a bit like taking notes. There are other ways to show patterns. There's a technique called a word cloud, and that's a free thing where you can gather all the text in one place and find patterns, find what words are being used the most. You can, there's something visual that you can add to your interviews. And you can put all your interviews in one document to do this and make sure you save up, uh, save backup copies first before you start copying, pasting everything into one document. And then you can watch a guide which shows you how to install a, a certain app into Word. Um, it's quite easy to do, I've tried it. And then you can, um, you can follow the guide there to, on how to do it. It's, re, it's really quite easy and there are other ways to do similar things that you could find online. There's links to this on the website, as I say. What about stories without words? In the second session, we talked about gathering stories through drawings and photos. People may read the same image in different ways. Um, so that's one thing to think about. So you might think about you might interpret what people have drawn in a different way from what they meant. So discuss it with them. 
the people who drew it discuss it with them it'll make help if you have some things people have said as well because if people are talking and drawing in the same session for instance then you can look at their drawings alongside what they said and that'll help you make sense of it Now, I've been talking about combining what people have said into the same message, but there's also a reason for sometimes telling one person's story. And that is that if you, it's a powerful way to show examples of what you're saying. It's really important to check with people first to get permission from them. So don't do this if it's, if it's um, unless you've asked people, but even if they give permission, be careful that you're not revealing who they are through their story, because if you're if you're chopping up what people say and putting it in different places, it's harder for people to identify someone if they are reading it. But if you've got one person's story there, then all the different elements of their life might be there. And it's quite easy to tell who they are, even though their name has been changed. So that's really something you have to take care of, because people won't maybe be so aware as you are that their stories will reveal who they are. So we would advise if there's any way that people might be able to recognize someone, for instance, if it's in a small community or a community in a big area, in a, even in a city where there's a, a community that's a minority, so people will probably be able to identify who it is, then don't share a story as one example like this. The next stage, once you've got your message, is to present your findings, present your message. And you need to think about your audience, the, the, the timing, and the way that you present your findings. In terms of audience, you need to think about who you want to influence and who can make the changes you want to see. It's not just about who's got the power to make changes, it's about which doors are open, which people are more amenable and going to be warmer to you. You might have relationships already with people that you can um, use to, maybe they can help you reach the people that do make the decisions, for instance. Could you work with others as well? Other groups might be trying to do the same thing. If you join up with other people, you'll have a stronger voice. Timing is really important as well. It's not something you've got much control of in some ways. The best thing to do is to be proactive, to take your message to people, not wait for them to invite you. But you also have to recognise that timing may not always suit the people you're trying to influence. There might be times when they have something else that they're doing. They can't really attend to what you're hoping they can. They might have a review of the service coming up in a few months time and they'll tell you there's not much we can do just now come back in a few months time because planners and decision makers they they have a lot going on and they have a timetable that they're working to that doesn't mean that you should be shy about saying what you're wanting it's just to be realistic about it as well and and not expect everything to be done because you have found something out now, in terms of presentation, if you are presenting what you've been finding, you need to think about making it engaging and easily understood, but appropriate to your audience as well. Whoever you're talking to, you want to get to the point and identify the key messages for a particular audience. It's good to build on other evidence that exists already, and that can help make your case and show that it's not just you and your group that's saying this. And it might also help to be balanced and show that you acknowledge that other perspectives exist. There's other ways of seeing it. You're not wanting to shy away from saying that you believe what you have is it, have said is right, but just even being aware of other perspectives will make people see you as being more reasonable and more willing to engage with you. Here's some other ways to present your data. Um, it doesn't have to be a, a presentation. It can be a graphic facilitation poster. That's that's uh, uh, an example that we've um, worked with a group in Scotland who 
hired someone in who knew how to do this. They did, they did this live as the group talked about their experience of volunteering at a food bank. You can have a flyer to raise awareness. That's another way to present what you're doing. In this case, it was around neurodiversity, the idea that we're all our brains are all wired differently. It's a positive way to think about mental health. So this flyer was raising awareness of this idea in the community. You can have an event to share what you're finding. Or you can do it more traditionally using a report. And if you're going to do a report, here are some of the main contents you would want to think about. You've got your introduction and background, what you wanted to do and why, how you did it. So that's how you gathered your stories, how you reached people, what you found, and then what needs to happen now. This is also available on the website. Now, in the live session, I asked, is there anyone important we've forgotten? And I asked, and we suggested that one of the most important groups to think about is the people you've been connecting with. It's good to check your story out with them in case you've got anything wrong. But even if you're not checking the story out with them, you need to get back to say what's been happening with their stories. Get the message right for them, just like with any other audience. Keep it short and concise and engaging. And probably a short summary will do because people don't necessarily want to spend a lot of time reading back what they've been saying, even though it was them that said it. They will probably appreciate things in a nice short way and so they can decide whether or not it's something that they, they agree with or not. And then at the end of the live session, we had a discussion, uh, an activity, and that was to introduce a way of coming up with or identifying people that are good to connect with as community connectors and putting them into a visual, uh, using a visual way to illustrate why you might want to focus on some groups more than others or why some groups are important in some ways and other groups are important in other ways. And that was using this type of um, chart, which has a, the degree of influence that somebody has or a group has or an organization has along the bottom there. And then up the side there is the level of interest that they have in your in what you've been having conversations and collecting stories around. So in this case, it's around the um, oral health of children. So we, we looked at how different groups might be in different in parts of the, the image here. And we, just to let you know, we identified that the group of people that might be in the top left, that, that would be perhaps the community members, the families and um, groups that you've been talking to. They've got a high interest, but they're probably not so able to make change happen. Whereas policymakers, people that work in the local authority would be up in the top right, perhaps. They're people that you could connect with who have uh, more of an influence over the things that affect oral health. And then there were also some people that could be in in the bottom right. That could be people who are harder to connect with. They might have a decision, an amount of decision making power, but they're not so easy to reach. So it might not be worth wasting too much time trying to reach them, but it's worth knowing that they're there and thinking about how, if, the, the, if there are any ways you could reach them. And that could be people in a local authority or other public service, such as the NHS, who do matter, but you know it's gonna be hard to reach. And if you have somebody that's got little influence and little interest in the bottom left, then you're probably not worth worrying too much about connecting with as a community connector. 
So this is the instructions for the activity. Again, it was using Jamboard, Google Jamboard, and it's free. And as I said in the second session, it's really useful um, if you're doing any online discussions and there are instructions for how to use it on the website. So just a quick recap on what we've been focusing on in these three sessions. It really is about the stories you gather and helping to achieve change. It's about prevention and working upstream. And we want to emphasize this point that it's about inequality and not just about raising awareness of the importance of looking after your teeth. It's about more than that. It's about thinking about the barriers and challenges people have that lead to children having to go into, to, to have um, care done on their teeth at a young age. And so that goes beyond just the questions about brushing your teeth, looking after your teeth. It's about bigger social questions. And that is why we're talking about prevention and lived experience and hearing from people as to what barriers they have in their lives and what can be done about them. So thank you very much. I've enjoyed delivering these sessions. I enjoyed meeting you. And um, we're going to send slides and links to further information. And uh, the website's there for more. Feel free to get in touch, as I say. Uh, my email address is there. And the light is fading. You can see that you can see that you can hardly see me on that screen. Um, and I'll just disappear into the darkness. But please do get in touch. Uh, and I've, I'll, uh, I'll be in touch by email. Thank you.